Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another Guild Wars 2 PvP build guide with out gameplay because PvP is in a really bad state at the moment. So, um, yeah, I've been trying quite a few games, but no one knows how to play any of their classes because it just came out. So, Heart of Thorns just released. So, yeah, it'll take a while to settle down, maybe one or two weeks. But up until then, I'll continue to make builds and play with some, um, play around with the classes just to get to know them and learn them as well. So, um, this is a, my updated Well Mesmer Chronomancer Guide, so it's focused similar to a Necro, massive wells that do AoE damage and pressure, and also the ability to do single target burst, and you have a lot of access to evades, um, blinds, invulnerabilities, and Continuum Split is also very strong with the build. So there's a few cool things you can do with that, which I'll show you in a minute. And we run sword torch greatsword so similar to many other mesmer builds greatsword runs air fire and sword torch runs air energy so energy for the extra dodge then marauder amulet and pack rune so instead of pack rune if you feel you're a bit squishier you can run vamp rune but that's not really necessary with marauder amulet and then into the traits we have domination dueling and chronomancer chronomancer trait line is the new one you can only get when you purchase heart of thorns and you'll need that expansion to play this build, unfortunately. Sorry for you guys who don't have it. In Domination, of course, we have Inflict Vulnerability when you interrupt foe. Not too strong with this build as it isn't interrupt focused. Then you have Illusions deal more damage. So your Phantasms also deal more damage. That counts with this trait. As you see here, the number is in blue. But without this trait, it is not. So that affects that trait. Uh, that affects phantasms as well, sorry. And then dazing a foe applies vulnerability. That's not too bad of a trait. You can, it helps you increase the damage on your shatter. Then shatter skills remove a boon on hit. That's very strong. And deal more damage for each stack of vulnerability. So you can use this also to kind of strip stability maybe when you interrupt someone for if they're stomping or reviving. And then mental anguish. So your shatter skills deal more damage. That affects all of them except the last two and they deal more damage versus foes who are like not casting a skill so if they're if there's a yellow cast bar on the bottom that means they're casting a skill but if they're just running somewhere you can just blow them up really quickly then in dueling gain vigor when you crit 10 second cooldown 5 second duration not too bad this is pretty much every class has this trait but it's good on mesmer for the extra dodges and um you drop deceptive evasion when you I'm oh, sorry you drop desperate decoy whenever you go below 50% health then illusions inflict bleeding on crits great for some condi pressure blind foes whenever you use a shatter skill and gain fury when you strike an enemy below the thr health threshold so anyone below 75% health gives you perma fury and then deceptive evasion so of course gain a clone when you dodge while in combat and switch to torch and then you get three clones and you can set up a shadow like so so chronomancer trait line you gain access this minor trait in all the specializations just gives you access to the skills pretty much and then wells grant alacrity to allies when they end so we actually have quite a few wells with this build four wells and a blink of course for the mobility and stun break and then gain alacrity for each illusion you shatter Alacrity, alacrity applied to you lasts longer, so that um, synergizes really well with these two traits. Also, if you have a triple illusion shatter, there's something cool you can do. So triple illusion shatter means all three illusions are up. And then you have alacrity that lasts like three or four seconds, and that reduces your mind rack a lot. And also that helps out with your other skills. And then we have, um, you just move 25% base like faster, so that helps you really get around points. This is a really great minor trait for Mesmer, probably one of the best ones in the game. And then, um, yeah, so the movement impairing conditions have reduced duration against you. And then, of course, Chrono Phantasma. So, Phantasms are resummoned after the first time they're shattered, so you can get massive burst off with Greatsword 4. And then you get a shatter off, and then the Phantasm gets resummoned. But, of course, it already died. And in, rela in relation to heal and utility, we run Well of Eternity. 
so that's ironic considering I have eternity. <laughs> but anyway, um, so it initially heals you for 3k, then it pulses three times, it removes conditions, and then on the last tick it heals you for 3.8k again. So you kind of got to stay in it the whole time for it to be good. But there's a cool thing you can do where you continuum split. You drop your well and then continue continuum split and then teleport back to inside your well and then get the final heal. But you've got to make sure that this goes off at the right time and you can also manually activate this skill. So I'll show you the Chrono Phantasma trait again. Actually it's a really high burst. Then the Phantasm gets resummoned and instantly goes back off after about one second. So not instantly, so it's not too overpowered, but it kind of makes them bait a dodge, and then the phantasm still goes off anyway, so that's why I like the trait. But yeah, continuum split, so this is a really great skill, um, it puts all your other skills onto like a separate timeline, and anything you activate, in, anything you do or like activate any skills during this time, um, when you go back to the original timeline, they're all on cooldown again. So let's say you have all f all of these utility skills up. You activate a continuum split, and then you drop all these skills, and then you teleport back with the continuum split. They'll all be up again, and the skills will still be down. So I'll try and show that off here. And let's get a continuum split off. And then we drop our elite well, every well here, all our healing wells. So we just got so many wells off there. Teleport back, all our wells are back up again. So that's why it's really powerful with Chronomancer. And yeah, so imagine the team pressure and stuff you can get off with this trait. It's, um, it doesn't work once you go down, so you can't like revert back to life, to being alive. But still, if you're like 90% health, you can pop continuum split. A thief bursts you down, backstabs you like 10% health, you'll just go back at 100% health. So it works with your health and dodges as well, so you can double dodge and when you go back you'll have full endurance you can double dodge again you can blink away but that doesn't do much since you go back to the original position anyway you can kinda of do a cool thing where you bait a revenant if the revenant sword threes you you continue them split then blink away and then they get carried over here and you go back to your original location <laughs> that doesn't always work but yeah some flashy plays can be made there so um, blink of course you know what that is 1200 range stun break and it can be used to get up ledges on certain maps. Then we have Well of Calamity. This is your main damaging well. So it has a very low cooldown, 20 seconds. It creates a well that rends time, damaging, jam damaging, weakening, and crippling foes in the area. When the final pulse of the Well Calamity triggers, it deals massive damage to foes in the area. So yeah, it, tri it, um, it ticks cripple and weakness and ticks small damage, and then on the final pulse it triggers massive damage. It also applies alacrity to you if you're inside the well at the final duration. And so this is your main offensive well used in team fights. I'll show it off here. Low damage, low damage, and then high damage at the end. I didn't crit there. But still, I really enjoy the Chrono Phantasma trait. Okay, let's try and get it back up. The well. Okay, then the second well here, this is your main source of alacrity. So, Well of Recall creates a well that steals memories from foes, damaging and chilling them. When it expires, it restores memories to allies, speeding their skill recharge. So this applies on um, 7 seconds of alacrity, and then it, it normally applies 5, but you gain 2 seconds at the end, so yeah. So it damages and chills foes every pulse. So the chill is also really strong for slowing down foes, making them stick in the well for even longer. And maybe you can queue it up with your other one so they get crippled and weakness as well on them. So I'll show off this well again. So it does a bit of low damage, then at the end it does high damage, then this one does decent damage every pulse, and then you gain alacrity at the end. So a great thing to you, um it's really great to use this well while in continuum split, so you gain um, like basically 14 seconds of alacrity if you can get two of them down. And then the final well, Gravity Well. This is a very strong skill, extremely great in team fights. On a 90 second cooldown for that reason, but it basically wins you most team fights, if not all of them. Oh, sorry about that. So, Gravity Well, um, it pulses again, low damage, and then at the end, high damage, similar to Well of Calamity, but it scales a little bit better. It also knocks down, pulls, and floats foes. So, it's really, it affects 
five targets as well, so it can be used on their whole enemy team. And it's um, it's the same size as all your other wells, though. So yeah, decent damage. It knocks them up, floats them, and then bursts them down. It also helps you win 1v1s. But um, one of the main things to do with this build is gain some phantasms up, and then continuum split, then drop all your wells, and some, you can even waste some of your shatter skills and then drop, you'll have them all up again as well okay let's just try and do it on this guy oh, we only got two continuum splits off so we can drop two wells three wells maybe and then we have all the wells up again and as you saw there we did the thing where I talk, talked about before where you continuum split and healing well so you get healed at the final tick and let's drop it again I really enjoy the heal well just you've got to stay in it for a long time. So, some another thing you can do is Well of Eternity, and then while you're in it, you can Blurred Frenzy. Oh yeah, we have a lot of alacrity as you see there, so it actually stacks up quite a lot. And that gives you, um, if you Blurred Frenzy inside of it, you can kind of absorb the heal a bit better and take no damage. But if you constantly are in combat and fighting, you'll actually have a lot of alacrity uptime because you'll constantly be spamming shatters as well because your illusions recharge and everything, dropping your wells gives you more alacrity and everything like that so yeah it's actually really fun to play around with it's one of the easier builds for the elite specializations because a lot of them are very hard to play but that's me because I just main Mesma but anyway um, I'm not going to show off a gameplay because PvP is in a really bad state at the moment I might upload some videos of me just playing PvP once the meta has settled down but there's a lot of new things in it there's a um, there's a new, what is it called? Reward tracks, yeah, so there's quite a few. There's a Halloween one for now. There's a Jungle Rabbit one, which gives you access to a Black Lion key and a finisher. And then there's a Burden Brink reward, reward track as well, which gives you bladed armor, which looks really cool. And there's a couple more as well. So this Jungle Rabbit one goes up every time, so it goes like Rabbit, Wolf, like Dolyak, Tiger, I don't know the order. But yeah, so and then you eventually get up to the dragon finisher, which is actually pretty cool. It's a very massive, great for a distraction. So I'm no longer going to be farming the glorious track. I'm going to be going for the black lion key one, because black lion keys are actually great since you can get them from PvP now. There'll be a lot more of them in the. There'll be a lot more black lion stuff in the market, so maybe prices will go down as well. So yep, I hope you guys like this build. Maybe play around with it. Tell me what you think. And give me some suggestions for Heart of Thorns builds. Um, I've been playing a lot of PvE at the moment with fractals out and everything. So yeah. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe for more videos. And remember to like and subscribe. Sorry. Yeah, see you guys next time.